If you believe that Jehovah would do you something and you would not be able to contain it, let me hear you scream! Come on! You can clap your hands with us. Can you sing it to your neighbor? Come on, LCG. It is a marvelous thing. My God. Jehovah, don't do me something. Oh. Oh. It is a marvelous thing. Now prophesy to yourself. Say, my life is a testimony. My life is a testimony. Sing it like you believe it, oh God. Jehovah, don't do me something. Oh. My life is a testimony.
everyone. Welcome to This Present House Online. It's Sunday morning and we're coming to you live from the Dome. We're super excited to see the start of a new month and what a special month it is for us. Happy Independence, Nigeria. There's so much in store for us starting with today's service. It's going to be incredible as we offer thanksgiving to God. Wherever you are watching from, we hope you have a great experience today. Stay with us as we count down to the start of the service with some great pre-service content. Did you catch the virtual Freedom Rally celebration on Thursday? What an experience that was for all of us. Here's a quick recap. It's a new day. Take a step concerning your career. Over Take a step nation. concerning education. Friends Take a step know. concerning health. Decree that Nigeria has come to stay. Come Decree that Nigeria is moving forward. Declare it this morning. I declare today we're moving into a season where the Daniels begin to arise. The Daniels begin to take their place. Those that have counsel, those that have wisdom. And though it is 60 years, though we do not see the Nigeria of our dreams, but my goodness, we will see Nigeria because that's why we are here. From the father foundations of earth, you have been God. You are God alone from before time began. You are seated and thrown in heaven in righteousness, in dignity, in power, and all dominion. And we stand before you today. Today marking 60 years of the existence of our nation. Whatever it is, the Bible says it is impossible for God to lie. God loves this nation. That's why He's given us so many words. Jesus, and the word that came at the gates of this nation shall no longer be shut. Ah, there will be no more frustrations, no more evil, no violence against our borders, around our borders. Ah, but we speak salvation over Nigeria. Jesus, good Father. Somebody This is Psalm 60 speaking to Nigeria at 60 from 1960. And he's saying, this, this is your map, this is your situation. This is your calling at this time to be the light and the salt. Return, O mighty men, to the valley of salt. The Lord says to Nigeria, I have given you a missionary spirit. And I am surely going to change the nations of the earth through you. But now I will give you the anointing to change your nation. The Lord says, I'm going to begin to unravel the corrupt system in Nigeria that men will say it is impossible. But I say with God, all things are possible. appointed a teenage teacher when I was about 13, 14. So um, I taught my mates when I was in church. But over the years, I glorify sin in the sense that I don't like the things of God. I don't know how that happened. Even when I had um, friends that go to church then, I you know, talked them out of going to church. And um, 2019 February, I went online and I saw Pastor Tony Rappel and I loved his preaching and the things he does. So I joined TPH. I've never had a Bible except the one my dad bought for me when I was a child. So I bought a Bible. You can't be a Christian, still believe that you are saved. But we aren't reading the Word of God. How do you have the manifestation of His Word? D during the DTI class, I've read at least maybe even more than half of my Bible. <laughs> Online is the best that could actually have happened to anyone because the class was brought close to us, like it's personalized. After the class, we are sent the recording of the class and the books 
to which in your own time you go back you listen to those audio or video it was beautiful now i see myself like wanting to share the world detail has blessed me miraculously Hello TPH family, doesn't it feel great to be back in church? The last few months of church online have been unprecedented for us at Junior Church. While the pandemic sort of caught us unawares, we are so grateful that we got a chance to stay connected to your kids throughout. Thank you for always sitting with them to help them navigate the services online. Now that we're back to physical meetings, what does that mean for our kids? As you are aware, the current health regulations still prohibit the gathering of children. And so, as much as we would love to welcome the kids back to Junior Dome, we will have to stay online for the time being. Our Junior Church online services will continue every Sunday at 9.30am on our YouTube channel, TPH Media. But rest assured, we are eagerly looking forward to welcoming your kids back to the Junior Dome. God willing, this should happen soon. For now, we encourage you to stay connected with all our online channels and watch out for our updates. My name is Fane, Principal of Junior Church. Thank you for your time. Hello Church, here's an update on what's been happening at TUG. While we've been unable to meet physically, the teens at the Underground Church have so far had a swell time online. We've connected every Sunday and other days throughout the lockdown on our Instagram handle at TUG Movement and we will continue online for the near future. This is to enable us prepare adequately for our return to physical service. God willing, this should happen soon. Parents, please stay connected to us as we bring you updates in days to come. For now, we encourage you to stay on the lookout on all social media channels and watch out for our updates. Thank you for your time. Now, we want to take this moment to specially thank everyone who's been a part of our physical services since we resumed three Sundays ago. Until now, registration to attend service has been entirely online, but I'm glad to announce that from next Sunday, you'll be able to complete your registration when you arrive at the Dome for service, especially if you've been unable to pre-register online. It is our joy to see you back in church and we can't wait to welcome you again. Church is about to start. It's not too late to invite someone. In fact, it's never been easier. Just send them the link and say, join me for service. Easy. So, are you ready for service? Pastor Kola Fabi is bringing the word. But first, we're going to be led in a powerful session of praise by One Music and our music ministers, Quinn Okoye, Dare Justified, Eniola Olushoga, and Minister Ken. I believe that God's presence can find you wherever you are at this moment. So open up your hearts and get set to be blessed. Stay tuned. <laughs> Psalm 126 says, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Today we come to give thanks to you, O Lord. We just give you thanks this morning. We thank you, O Lord, for the opportunity to do, be in your presence, to bring our thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving Sunday, O Lord. We need your presence. We need your Holy Spirit. We need your angels, O Lord. Father, we thank you. We exalt your holy name this morning. We give you praise. We just give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. 
welcome everyone you're all looking great and beautiful say hi to your neighbor this morning the post covid style
morning. We worship your holy name, O oh God. We give you all the praises that is due to you. We magnify you. We honor you, O oh God. Even for numerous deliverances, O oh God. For your faithfulness in our lives, O oh God. For your goodness and your mercy. They are new every morning. We have enjoyed your benefits, oh God. Father, we lift up our voices and we shout hallelujah to you. We shout hallelujah to you. We shout hallelujah to you. We give you all the glory, oh God. We give you all honor and adoration, oh God. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth. Your high praises is in our mouth this morning. Father, we worship you. We exalt you, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. Magnify the Lord. Come on, people. Magnify the Lord. He is worthy this morning. He is worthy. Hallelujah to you, Lord. We give you praise. We honor you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Oh, my. Oh, my. Wow. What a beautiful day this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful day. You're welcome to church and to all our online viewers, wherever you might be connecting all over the world. We say a beautiful welcome to you this morning. And we pray that even as we connect to God this morning, you will stay connected. Not only physically by watching your screen, but in the spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. And the high praises of God will never depart from your mouth or in your family, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come and say a beautiful welcome to your neighbor this morning. Aren't you looking so beautiful and radiant? Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Welcome to the month of October. Wow, it's the last quarter of the year already. Can you believe it? We're stepping out of a season of divine repositioning and restoration. And the charge before us as a people in this new season is to break forth, is to break loose and to step out of containment. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 2 declares boldly, enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will possess nations and settle in their desolate places. This season, the charge is to break out of every form of limitation or containment that we have settled for in the last couple of months and God is taking us on a journey of revelation and as we engage beginning from this service and throughout the rest of the year God is bringing freshness I see greenery ahead of us as a tribe as a nation as a people whatever you do be part of every one of these experiences from our recharge sections to every meeting and every cell group meeting that you are meant to be part of and God's word will bring revelation to you. I want to pray for you in a second that God in this season you would break out of every form of containment. You will break out of every form of limitation and beginning from today as we rejoice before God in thanksgiving there is a release to go out there breaking limits breaking bounds god bless you welcome again to the month of october taking all i have and now i'm laying it at your feet You'll have every failure, God You'll have every victory
Tuesday is going to be massive. I am so excited that we are back to the dome for our first physical breakfast meeting in seven months. Ladies, we absolutely can't afford to miss out on this. Shout it out from the rooftops. Make it a date, a 9 a.m. prompt. This week, we kick off a new season of Recharge. Make sure to join us live from 7 p.m. at MyTPH on Instagram and of course invite others to connect. We are currently accepting volunteers in various departments of the church. To volunteer, please visit thispresenthouse.org forward slash volunteer. Is this your first time at This Present House? Whether you are here in person or streaming online, we hope you're having a great experience and we want to give you a special welcome. If you're at the Dome, please send your name and address to 0701-704-0663. If you're online, just leave a message with the hashtag FirstTimer. And trust me, you'll get a warm welcome. That's all the news we have this morning. We'll have more for you during the week. So stay connected to our online channels. Thanks for watching. It's time of the service where we have to give our offering to God. And for me, it's a, it's a time for us to thank God for life, thank him for preservation, thank him for whatever that he's doing for us in this season. And uh, before we do that, I want to thank everyone for your giving. Um, we appreciate you and we pray that God in this season that you experience transference of wealth. And you know that you went. First Kings seventeen twelve to fifteen. First King seventeen twelve to fifteen. And only when she did that that multiplication started. She didn't hold back. If she had held back, that multiplication wouldn't have taken place. I remember um, there was a particular year that I made a pledge, and Pastoni was like, "Okay, in November." He said, "Make sure that you redeem your pledge that year." I was like, "Okay." I went and took all the money I had in my bank account and redeemed my pledge. I know, you know, some people were like, okay, what's going on here? And it was when I redeemed the pledge that the multiplication happened. And for me, I hold strongly to this case of the woman and Elijah. This is a time, this is a good time to sow in the kingdom. And I know that God will bless you. So to give this morning, we have them. Um, our offering our tithe and our seed donation towards various work we are doing. Please, the account number. Um, the, there's a phone number there too. You can also reach out to if you have challenges. We have the ushers. They are going to bring um, offering envelopes. And also POS is behind. If you want to use the POS, we have our POS machines behind. But the account numbers are there. You can go to the website too. You will see the details. If you want to pay in dollars, if you want to pay in naira, in pounds, all the details are in in our website and my prayer for us that that God will bless all of us in this season and the grace of God will continue to be sufficient for us people of God let us pray over our thanksgiving over our offering for the fact that we are alive is more than enough to be grateful to God father we thank you father we bless your holy name we honor you we appreciate you for this season for this opportunity that you've given us to give who bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord, as your people give to you this morning. Father, I pray that you open the floodgates of heaven over their lives in the name of Jesus, that they will experience abundance in this season in the name of Jesus, that they will experience transference of wealth in this season in the name of Jesus, that this week, oh God, that you feel give them strange favor in the name of Jesus, in their businesses, in their career. Father, open the floodgates of heaven over your people in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answering us this morning. For we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you in church.
Good morning, church. I have to remove this mask because the Bible says that God has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron asunder. <laughs> you know, it's not easy wearing this stuff. A lot of times I always forget it at home. I have to turn back, go and look for it. And, uh, you know, one day that led me to post one video on my Instagram. And I, look, I always forget this stuff. My wife will say, you know what? Keep three in your car. So that every time you forget, just pick an extra one. Good morning, church. Well, I'm so delighted to be here this morning, thanking God and praising God for what he has done, what he has done in our lives, what he has done in our country, and what he's doing all over the world. And I'm glad to see so many faces back in church this morning. You know, I remember, was it not last, you know, two Sundays ago when we just came and it was, it was something new. And after the first service, I was greeting some people, hugging, ah, how are you? Nice to see you. And the headmistress just started, everybody get out. We, are, we want to fumigate the hall. I said, fumigate? Uh, did we bring jams to the church, you know? <laughs> and I said, look, we've, I've not done this in six months. You know, seeing each other, hugging, and, you know, sometimes we meet at times at different places, but it's different when we come together in church like this, in the presence of God. Praise the Lord, somebody. And um, thank God Almighty for the house. Thank God for how God held us all through the period of the pandemic. God is a very faithful God. God upheld us, God strengthened us, God upheld in so many ways he protected his people. You know, if somebody said we'll go through this like this, we'll say no. But thank God, many, just like the song we sing sometimes, many are dying, many are perishing, but whatever we are, it is by your grace. It is by your grace. Let's open a Bible this morning. I have a short time to spend uh, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1. Our theme for this season is breaking forth. Breaking forth. It's a very powerful principle from the scriptures and i also greet uh, people that are worshiping with us online connected from different parts of the world it's so beautiful to have you back today it's going to be a wonderful day and a wonderful week ahead for every one of us in jesus name book of deuteronomy chapter one i'll start reading from verse five verse five it says on this side of the jordan in the land of moab Moses began to explain this law, saying, The Lord our God spoke to us in Oreb, saying, You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey, and go to the mountains of the Amorites, to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains and in the lowland, in the south and on the sea coast, to the lands of the Canaanites, and to Lebanon, as far as as a great river, river Euphrates. See, everybody says see. That means he has done it. I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, to give them and their descendants after them. The beginning of that verse says see, not look. It's different from look, see. I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give to three generations of people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them and their descendants after them. Shall we pray? Mighty Father, we thank you this morning for your grace, for the entrance of your word gives light, and it gives understanding to the simple. We open ourselves up to your grace this morning. Teach us your word. Open our eyes to see what you want us to see, and glorify yourself in it. We give you all the glory, God Almighty. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, like I said, so glad to see us back in church again. Because a lot of times, many of us wondered how life would be like after the chaotic pandemic. Many people wondered, how are we going to cope? We heard a lot of news, a lot of reports, a lot of things happening to people. Businesses being affected, things affected, families being affected. And some families, you find them in different parts of the world. Some people on their way back to the U.S., they said they wanted to stop over at the U.K., a friend of mine was at the airport wanting to board a plane back to Nigeria. That was where the lockdown started. And he had to stay there for six months. Many people got stuck in the U.S. Many people got stuck in Argentina. Different parts of the world. And you now wonder what exactly was going on. You know, we've never seen it before. Although we read about the pandemic that occurred many years back. But this one is in our own time. Many people didn't know how to cope. Many businesses shut down. Because many businesses depending on people, meeting with people interacting with people you know getting attention of people all of a sudden everything stopped some businesses had to work from home 
And it's so interesting that a lot of businesses, a lot of offices, a lot of corporations came back to our homes. A lot of schools, a lot of institutions had to stop. They came back into our homes. A lot of children's school, children's education, everything they were doing came back home. Our church activities, church events, all the programs in churches came back home. All the parties, oh, I'm there. Kosime, all the, everything we're doing in different ways, everything came back home. So our homes became multi-purpose centers in everything. And we now saw our homes at a different place. You have mothers becoming teachers. You have mothers, the roles of wives being affected, now becoming full-time teachers. A lot of things changed. Many people wondered what happened. And of course, that, and the teachers started feeling relieved because all, their, all the children, have, they've gone home to go and meet their parents. You started it, so face it. <laughs> So the teachers were relieved in a way, although they were online teaching the students as well, but of course they were relieved of all the running around of the, of the, of the pupils in school. And a lot of things were affected. But in the midst of it all, the question we want to ask ourselves is, how were you affected? Were you affected positively? Were you affected negatively? Did it come out of the pandemic the way you went in? Was your faith affected? Was your relationship with people affected? Was your view about God himself affected? Was your faith built up or it depleted? How about the way you see your business, your goals, your ambitions, your vision? Were they affected negatively or they got boosted? Did you break forth in the midst of the pandemic? Did you pull back in the midst of the pandemic? Because the point is, you shouldn't come out of the pandemic the way you went in. If you look at the scriptures quite well, God allowed a lot of pandemics to take place. I mean, a lot of lockdown to take place. Some due to pandemic, some due to other reasons. And we have to draw from the, philosophy, from the principles of the Bible about how people handled lockdowns. How, what did the scripture teach us about handling lockdown? What did God teach his people about handling lockdown? The brother was speaking when he was taking the offering. He said the children of Israel, when the plague was taking place in Egypt, God made a transference of wealth. The people were locked down in Egypt. But when it was time to go, when it was time to get out of the 400 and something years of lockdown, God had to make a transference of power, the power of wealth. God had to move some things into the hands of his people. Everybody say his people. Those that trust in the Lord. So God almighty made that to happen. And when they left Egypt, they brought forth into the wilderness. They brought forth out of bondage. And that was exactly what God taught Moses when he was in Midian. Midian. Midian was a place where Moses went to when he left Egypt, when he ran away from Egypt. And he was there, locked down for 40 years. And in the process, he was learning about administrative skills, teaching from uh, uh, Jethro, his, um, his father-in-law. And after the whole thing, he, had, he developed the ability how to handle, how to handle administrative uh, matters, how to handle events, how to handle uh, occurrences. And by the time he left, in the power of the Holy Ghost, he broke forth. And through that, he was able to deliver the children of Israel from bondage, from slavery and servitude. They were there for over 400 years. But by the power of God, by the things he learned under lockdown, he was able to deliver Israel. Look at the case of David. David learned how to kill giants while he was under lockdown in the wilderness. He was developing himself and he was even writing about them. He was developing himself. He was developing his skills. Look at the time when he was under the lockdown in, in the cave of Adullam. There he was. He brought some people together, people of like minds, people he could trust. They developed a team and through the power they developed under lockdown. By the time they left the lockdown, they, they demolished every kingdom that came against Israel. The power that they derived from lockdown. They had to defeat every nation, every country that came against Israel. Look at the case of Gideon. The same thing with Gideon. He was under lockdown under, in the wine press, preparing wine and doing all sorts, while he was running away from the same thing that God called him to go and defeat. The same thing God called him to defeat, he was running away from. He was under lockdown. And in the process, God visited him. He said, look, God, look, bros, this is only what I've called you to do. Get out of that lockdown. I have called you to carry out something on my behalf. And of, of course, God made him to realize who he was, what he carried. And in the process, when they left the lockdown, he was able to defeat the same thing that confronted him. The power that he derived from the lockdown. The power of obedience to God. What did you bring out of the lockdown? 
the lockdown must, must have changed you. Don't tell me nothing changed. Don't tell me your prayer life did not get affected. Don't tell me that your outlook about life did not change. Don't tell him about the way you handle things did not change. Because God will never leave his people stranded. God will never leave his people confused. That's every principle that God brings out of every what we call bad situations. We call it bad situations. God, God calls it ministry school. We call it lockdown pandemic. The country is at a standstill. God calls it healing the land. People will say, oh, every business is shutting down. God is saying he's re-engineering the businesses. Many people say, oh, all the countries, no money, nothing to do. God is saying he's re-engineering the currency power of every, every country. The way you see it, it is the way you get it. But God wants you to see it in a different way. The way God works things out is totally different. You see, God uses the foolish things to confirm the wise. Your mindset is about the, what the world is saying. The world says this. See, it got to a point, you see. I started watching CNN at the beginning. It got to a point. I said, hey, 100,000, 5,000 died, 3,000 died. I said, hey, God. After about three weeks, I said, God, come. I can't continue like this. You know, I had to post on my Instagram. One guy that was covered with one nylon like this. You know, everybody was afraid. It seems as if if you go out of your house, you are going to see a virus waiting at the door. It was that bad. <laughs> you know, doctors made us to see a lot. They told us so many things that <laughs> it's a wonder. You're afraid of meeting with people. You're afraid of getting near people as if they are all embodiments of virus. But God wants us to see something different. He says, we have, we have gone around this mountain of coronavirus for too long. Get out of that mountain. Yes. Get out of that discussion of coronavirus. You know what? Coronavirus, if, according to the principle of God, is already gone. It's already gone. Leave that mountain of coronavirus effect on your business, on your career. Leave that mountain of coronavirus effect on your home and your family. God says, leave that mountain. It is time to move on. Yeah. Yeah. Moses, Moses and his colleagues, they were so comfortable at, the, at Horeb on Mount Sinai. They were talking. He got to the point they forgot about the assignment in Canaan. God had to wake them up say, come on guys, get up. See, I have set before you a goal to accomplish. After the pandemics, life must go on. And it must be a life of exponential growth. It must be a life of exponential breaking forth. It must be one of breakthrough in which things that you have suffered turn around for good. For the goodness of your life. Because where we're going, where we're headed, is totally different from where we're coming from. The assignment God gave us has, has been re-engineered completely. God is giving us a new vision. God is giving us a new assignment. Break forth into what he has given to us. Break forth into liberty. Break forth into freedom. The children of Israel, they broke forth from all those places. And God Almighty took them to a new ground, a new place. Because the challenges ahead in the world today is different from the challenges we had before. In the midst of the, in the, midst of the lockdown, we learned so many lessons. The power of telecoms. The power of the internet. The power of e-services was unleashed in so many ways. You see, you can afford to allow your business not to be in the mainstream of global development. Your business has to flow with the power of God. God gave Abraham a promise that his seed will go to the uttermost part of the earth. When God was saying that, many of us were thinking you enter Pojo 504 and you travel to Australia. Enter Pojo 504, you go to India. But God had the internet in mind. That in the comfort of your room, you can visit Australia. In the comfort of your room, you can visit India. In the comfort of your room, you can go to Alaska and see what is going on in Alaska. God is the God of the future. Even in the Bible, like I tell people in some of our classes, that somebody saw the motor car, automobile, in the Bible, in the book of Nahum, chapter 2, verse 4. Somebody saw the motor car. He said all, the, all these entities, they were jostling in the streets with their lightnings. Somebody saw it long ago. What do you see about the future? I tell people this. I said, look, if you want to have... If you want to get the attention of your customers, I, I tell people a lot, if you want to get the attention of your customers, you advertise to them. Pedestrian advertisement, oh yes, okay, on Instagram, on Facebook, and that, you get your attention. But it's different from, if you want to own the attention of your customers. One thing is to get the attention, another thing is to own the attention. The people that own the attention of their customers is someone who is able to go into the future and predict what the problem will be. What the problem will be next year. What the problem will be the following year and today create that solution to solve that problem of the future and give it to your people you get your attention for good you own the attention for good 
some 20 years or 30 years ago, when we were very young, we used to have this dialogue. You know, about, some of you don't know dialogue. Look at those people with gray hair and ask them dialogue. You know, when, when my dad, whenever they went out to work on my mom, some of us just three, one, two, pa, 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 pa. You know, you remember that? <laughs> you know, then it was the best. It was the best of the invention. But at that moment, somebody was thinking about, look, if I carry this phone with me in my car, how would it look like? Somebody was thinking about the future. And in the process of thinking about the future, he created something, a solution, and gave it to man. So that way, he didn't just get our attention, but he owned our attention. Today, he's still owning our attention by the mobile phone. What is your business seeing about the future? You need to break through. You need to break forth. And that is the way you break forth. Anticipate where you're going. Anticipate what the problem will be next year and create a solution today. Breaking forth requires so much. God wants you to see in your business, what do you see? What do you, prog- what do you project as going to be the problem in Nigeria in the next two years? Start working on that now. And that requires what you call vision. Everybody say vision. You need to have foresight. Foresight is necessary for every child of God to break forth. Foresight is necessary for every businessman to break forth. First side is necessary for every ministry person to break forth. Without you seeing the future, you find it difficult. If you are a hairdresser, you, sh- you, can, you can devise new ways of doing things. I remember way back, we used to buy oranges, buy banana, we eat all those things separately. But one day somebody just said, look, you know what, let me mix this together and see what it looks like. That was how somebody invented smoothie. And today we are still, drinking, we are still taking smoothie. One of our weaknesses, you know. I... Also, sometimes when I go to the shops, I see, you know, some of us are, we say we are shedding our height. <laughs> so, sometimes ago, I went to the shop, I saw cashew nut, granite in a pack. So, they combine and I say, okay, what if somebody starts doing a smoothie of those things? Do a smoothie of it and investigate on the benefits, what it can cure in the body. You can do that. And begin to manufacture it and put something on it. That's innovation. That way, you're anticipating the problem of the future and you're solving it. It could be somebody who is, who, is, who is a builder, maybe a property developer. You're looking at some buildings, because these days people live in big houses, you know? Bigger houses, everybody wants to be bigger than before, bigger and better. But the point is, after the, children, after the children leave home, what happens? You are left at home with your wife or your husband. You are left at home, and eventually the house becomes big. A friend of mine was telling me, I was in the last month, he said, you know what, there's a place in my house I've not been to in a month. I said, really? I said, I said yes. So the point is, when you are designing houses for people, think of the future. That, okay, when we get to a certain point, when we move this wall around, eventually it becomes two flats that you can rent out. Ideas. Projecting for the future. My time is running out. I have so many things to say this morning, but one thing is sure. For breaking forth, we need vision. We need foresight. We need the hand of God upon us, and we need obedience. The power of foresight is very crucial. The people that are moving to this market are the people that have the foresight previous years ago. They didn't start... Last year, they didn't start two years ago. They started 10, 20 years ago. And today, they still own our attention. What is your business seeing about the future? What is your career seeing about the future? What is your enterprise seeing about the future? It's one thing to move around as a pedestrian worker, as a pedestrian businessman. But the people that will have edge over the others are the people that can see ahead, predict problems, and create solutions for it. Let's pray for the grace of God this morning. The grace for foresight. The power of foresight. Praise to God Almighty this morning. Power to break forth. Breaking into new grounds. Breaking into new grounds. Breaking into new grounds. In your ministry, you need to break into new grounds. In your career, you need to break into new grounds. Breaking forth by the power of the Holy Ghost. Heavenly Father, I receive the grace. The grace to break forth. The grace to break through. The grace to break through. To break through every barrier. Every hindrance. Every obstacle. The anointing destroys the yoke. The anointing destroys the barrier. The anointing destroys the blockade. The anointing destroys the hindrances. God Almighty, I receive the anointing, destroying every yoke that we want to hold me down. Every yoke that we want to have impact on me. Every yoke that we want to stand in my way. Every yoke that we want to hinder me from advancing. God Almighty, I receive your grace this morning. I receive your grace this morning. I receive your grace this morning. I not lift your hand and magnify the Lord this morning. Our Lord is good. Our Lord is mighty. Our Lord is gracious. Our Lord is lovely. Our Lord is mighty and powerful. His power is great. His goodness is great. His goodness is great. 
Let's thank God Almighty. Father, we thank you this morning. We receive your grace, O oh Lord. The power, the grace to break forth. Power to break into new grounds. To break into new frontiers. Getting into new territories that we've not been before. Let the heavens be open upon us, O oh God. And let your fresh anointing, your fresh oil pour upon us. That will make us advance and enter into new territory. Let new doors be open. Because you make ways in the wilderness. You make rivers in the desert. Let every mountain be leveled before us. Let every valley be filled up, O oh God. Let every crooked path be made straight. Let every rough places be made plain. And let your glory move with us, O oh God. Except you move, Heavenly Father, we will not move, Heavenly Father. Let your guidance, let your protection be upon every one of us. And as we enter into this new season, Heavenly Father, let your grace be multiplied upon every family, upon everyone, upon every career, upon every business, upon every enterprise, upon every state, every nation, all over the world, O oh God. Let your righteousness rise up on our behalf and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father, this morning. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Were you blessed? Were you blessed? Were you blessed? So while you're still standing, we're about to break into the praise party. And I know that's why you're here. This day has been declared God's announcement of your breaking forth and the word you just heard that God is giving you divine revelation today welcome with me one music minister Ken minister Dari justified queen this take us into the time of praise now listen see today's praise is a is from a place of the prophetic right so what we are doing, it might not seem like it around you. You're not just praising God for what he has done. You are praising into what he is doing. Hallelujah. So child of God, and we love you, our friends from Barbados, from the UK, wherever you are from the world, wherever you are for watching us, us from the world, I want you to just drop in the chat, on the chat saying, I am watching from here. I will love you, Avril, from, from the Barbados. You are always with us, raising that praise party from all that end of the world. And let every tongue, every tribe lift up the name of the Lord. I just want to say what a prayer. I'll be back to pray with you as we break into the last quarter of the month. But this is it. Listen, when you are thanking God today, Minister, are you ready? Are you ready? This man is a prophet. He's not a singer. He's been anointed into the company of prophets. Welcome with us today, the Samis. And Nyola, God bless you, woman of God. God bless you. Now, these are prophets. And wherever you are, make sure you do not sit down. Because as you dance, you break into something new. How many of us are ready to break into something new today? Hallelujah. Give it up for Minister Dari to the fire. Know that you know that God has given you victory. Can you jump on your feet this morning and give the Lord a shout? Yeah. Hey. Everybody say, have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. people that we have in the house oh my, yeah, yeah. you conquered corona you conquered sickness lift your head and your head what the lord has done he has destroyed the works of satan say he has given a victory that's why we sing oh say everybody say have you heard what the lord
we are going to be doing a lot of a lot of running today. Okay. It's because we have three more months to go before 2020, and we need to catch up. We need to catch up. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, let go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, Why are you standing in one place? someone who's preparing for an interview tomorrow morning and you do not stand a chance by your own standard but what happened while you were praising God and running around your space was that you were lifted from the bottom of the pile to the top and I heard the Spirit of God say to everyone who danced with reckless abandon to God this morning that you have become the favored one you have become the chosen one you have become the preferred one in the name of jesus now i'm gonna give direct justify 30 more seconds just in case you lost the chance to move and to praise god as you take time now for the next 60 seconds the children of Israel went round the walls of Jericho seven times in seven days. And on the seventh day, the Lord said, Encompass this wall for seven times. And at the seventh time, let the trumpeters get the trumpet. And let everything that has breath give a shout of praise. <laughs> wherever you are, wherever you are in the world right now, whether you understand the language or not because we speak a universal language of praise now for the next 60 seconds as the as the singers begin to worship everything that has become an obstacle before you picture it as you take on this prophetic praise and speak to that wall to come down crumbling now as you enter into the month of october are you ready people are you ready Jehovah, 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 Jehovah.
Hallelujah. I see you making in quarter four more than everything that this year has symbolized before. In this quarter, as we step into Q4, I see your business recovering from every loss in the name of Jesus Christ. In the next 90 days, I declare over your family in the next 90 days, I declare over your plans that the Lord will breathe on them. In the name of Jesus, you are breaking forth to the right. You are breaking forth to the left. Yes. The hand of God is upon you. Amen. The supernatural power of the Most High Amen. is breaking every oh. chain around you. Break forth. Shut Break up. forth. Amen. Break forth. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey. 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 Amen. Believe the Lord and you would believe his prophet and you've established yeah yes. Yes. on friday we had a video here right and you logged on from all over the world and it seemed as though as word of knowledge was going forward throughout yesterday it was celebration of testimonies and people were calling from east west north and south say when you spoke about this by the spirit of god you are speaking about my life and in the last in 24 hours we're already experiencing these testimonies coming in from the left from the right you are next in line Amen. this is not religiosity and wherever you are from the face on the face of the earth i speak life over you Amen. limbo tone satayin hallelujah celebrate with me this amazing band of prophets amen all right you can be seated for a second God bless you one minute. It's good to see you. It's good to see I'm back to my calm self, yeah? It's, it's good to see you. Um, thank you for, um, and for those who we see online, it's good to see you. You know, we ask them to just say where they're watching from. It's amazing that from every continent of the world, we've got people just being part of this experience isn't that amazing for those of us on site can we celebrate our friends online hallelujah today is a special day for a lot of reasons one of the persons one of my brothers have decided to break forth <laughs> welcome with me minister myro join me on stage very quickly come on celebrate our own celebrate our own hallelujah So, yeah, you got a mic for you, sir. Congratulations, man of God, Thank on you. the launch of the Spirit and Life album. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, two weeks ago, we were talking about this in, in future terms. Tell us, what has the experience been like? In, in just a few minutes, these people want to, well, they want to progress. They want to quickly go and begin to overcome, yeah? So, tell us. Well, what I would say about, I mean, a lot of work has gone into this from May of last year. Some of you remember when we had a live recording. So some of you were a part of it. And this is the work right now. And um, it's, it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now, these, these things are tools. Music is a tool that we use to reach God. For some of us, it's an arsenal that we use in fighting the battles of life. And this was inspired by the scripture in John 6, 63. Jesus said, I'm paraphrasing, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. In this project, what you experience is the spirit of God, the word of God, and the life of God. I love the fact that those of us on sites can lay hands on these CDs. But can you tell our friends online all over the world how to download this? this okay, well, it's, it's available online everywhere, any online platform. iTunes, Amazon Music, Spotify, Deezer, Boomplay, everywhere. So look out for Myro Essay, Spirit and Life album. We, we, we have not forgotten the album before this the worship of yahweh so you can also look out for that album each, each time he's my brother he's my friend but i kid not i flatter not each time 
I join the company of angels when he leads. It's just always a surreal experience. God bless you, man of God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So for those of us on site and those that will be joining us for second, by the way, you want to join us for second service if you're in the city of Lagos. You want to join us because it was a huge party in here. And we try not to make you feel bad if you're out. So that's why we don't show a lot of the, the party going on here. So you want to join us on site if <laughs> there's someone just laughing. It will look unfair to our friends in Barbados in the US. But wherever you are for 1030, call a friend, tell someone there's a prophetic move going on. And we are breaking forth on every side. Share the link with someone. Tell someone, be part of this experience. God bless you. On Wednesday, we're back with Recharge. It's a new season. It's a new experience. And for this Wednesday, we're having worship and communion. You, you want to be part of that experience. It's on, on at my TPH on Instagram. And on next Sunday, we're back here with a fresh experience of God. And for the rest of the video announcement, you can get it right after service on our website and on our YouTube page. God bless you. Let's stand on our feet as we begin to close. Sipotai legede. Lift up your right hand and say, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'm dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a lovely, lovely week ahead. Amen. I was appointed a teenage teacher when I was about 13, 14. So um, I taught my mates when I was in church. But over the years, I glorify sin in the sense that I don't like the things of God. I don't know how that happened. Even when I had um, friends that go to church then, I, you know, talked them out of going to church. And um, 2019 February, I went online and I saw Pastor Tony Rappel and I loved his preaching and the things he does. So I joined TPH. I've never had a Bible, except the one my dad bought for me when I was a child. So I bought a Bible. You can't be a Christian, still, believe that you are saved but we are not reading the word of god how do you have the manifestation of his word D during the detail class i've read at least maybe even more than half of my bible <laughs> online is the best that could actually have happened to anyone because the class was brought close to us like it's personalized after the class we are sent the recording of the class and the books to which in your own time you go back, you listen to those audio or video. It was beautiful. Now I see myself like wanting to share the world. Detail has blessed me miraculously. Taking all I have and now I'm laying it at your feet You'll have every failure, God, you'll have every victory that you chose to spend time worshipping with us today. We hope you've been blessed and we look forward to connecting with you again next week. City Church Online also continues this week. Details of meeting times and links to join will be shared via our various online channels, so please stay on the lookout. 
Meanwhile, remember that our doors are now open for physical service and we've been having a swell time here on site. If you're in or around Lagos, why not visit us sometime? We'll love to host you. Remember that now you can register for service when you arrive at the Dome, so no worries there. Just come as you are. It's been great hanging out with you online this morning. Stay connected as we'll have great info for you during the week. I'm Toke. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and see you next time.